humans. This is one of those special kind of days when I'm editing Titanium at the same time as I'm doing the Patreon write-up for Gallium, and also painting Praseodymium, so yay for chaos! <laughs> I am so lost. I have been having an erratic time with my spoons lately. Today has been pretty swell, but just in general, the world is heavy. Things take more effort than they should. I may well have depression or bipolar disorder or some such, but I'm too avoidant to go find out. <laughs> oh, maybe it's just the weather. It is ass-twistingly cold out there. At least I have some spoons, even on bad days. I vividly remember that when I had cancer without knowing it, I was always falling asleep and feeling foggy and just thought I was getting old. <laughs> and then there was chemo. Holy hell. That was when I discovered what it was to be spoonless. There were no spoons. To walk from my bed to the couch would require a five-hour nap. <laughs> Why not stay in bed? Because my little dog had developed epilepsy the very week I was diagnosed. And if I stayed in bed during the day, she would stress herself into a seizure. I swear, this happened. But if I slept on the couch, she was much less likely to turn into a broken wind-up toy, bless her heart. So there I slept, all day, every day, for four months. Chemo sucks. Titanium here is one of the periodic table's more commonly recognized metals. It is celebrated as having the highest strength-to-weight ratio and also for being unusually corrosion-resistant. In giving him a metaphysical handle, I had these qualities to choose from and went with the latter. I dubbed him imperviousness, which is a bit of a mouthful, but so be it. Strength I have assigned to the next element over, vanadium, which we will discuss next week. She is a wombat for reasons. Similar reasons have given titanium this crocodile physique, which might be an alligator. I honestly cannot remember which one I used as a photo reference, so if you're a herpetologist and want to correct me in the comments, be my guest. Like scandium, titanium is used in aircraft and spacecraft, as well as more mundane places like golf clubs and tools. Because of its strong reputation, its name even turns up in places where the actual metal is not. Like a flyer that says, special guest, share, and then it's actually a share impersonator. <laughs> in my original sketch, Titanium, as well as his brothers in this column, Zirconium, Hafnium, and Rutherfordium, were all orcs. That changed when I opted to do anthropomorphic animals, but orcs would have been fun. Someday I might go back and redraw these character designs, but as orcs. What would be better, though, would be seeing another artist's interpretation of that. That would be epic. Especially since, full disclosure, I kinda suck at orcs. I always end up making them pretty. I'm just crap at ugly, hulking characters. Just take a look at Titanium's perfect posture here. Monsters aren't my shtick. We need Jazza for that. He has this series where he turns Pokemon into hideous, great, looming beasts with foaming jaws and bloody talons. It's absolutely stunning. I'll link it below. His channel does not need my help, <laughs> but none of them do. <laughs> Quite the reverse, at least for now. Hey, Jazza! Endorse me. There was a lot of push and pull with these colors. It was hard to make them accurate looking without losing a sense of volume, but I tried. An effort was made. I also tried to treat my little dog's seizures, but that, that didn't end well. I looked into canine epilepsy meds, and they all have a caveat like, this may help a bunch, but it will kill your pet's liver and your dog can never stop taking it. And I thought, Oh, this started when I became a cancer patient. She seizes every time I get treatment. Maybe she can smell it on me. If we can nurse her through to my surgery, maybe she'll get better too, or at least we can reevaluate then, right? So I took her to a naturopathic vet, and they were really awesome, and they gave me an herbal tincture that seemed to help somewhat, and they prescribed her CBD, but sadly in amounts we could not afford. I gave her some, but it wasn't nearly enough. And Sonia wasn't getting better, but she wasn't getting worse, so I thought we'd make it. I went in for my tumor removal surgery on a Friday. I was set to come home on Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, she went into a seizure that never stopped. Jason took her to the animal hospital and they sedated her, but she died that night. 
I'm sorry. My video is all sad now. I should have talked instead about the the p p the plate scales and the airplane body paint and the fact that titanium white is what we're referencing with all his decor. It's it's just that it's February and all this sad crap happened almost exactly 2 years ago and it gets more raw on the anniversary. I'd never had a dog before so I wasn't prepared for the level of devotion they are capable of. Cats, sure, I've had cats. I grew up with cats. Cats don't give a shit. Even the ones that like you are like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Sonia was a whole nother level. Sonia was my shadow. And she was a dorky with these great big ears and really short legs. And she was, she was something special. We were all pretty shattered. Her little ghost hung around for a while, but I gave her a proper funeral by taking her collar and her favorite toy in a beautiful box Jason made to Burning Man, and I put it in the temple and watched it burn like the best Viking send-off a little doggo ever had. And eventually we got more dogs and time heals, but I don't think I'll ever be any dog's everything again. Not if I can help it. It hurts too much. I'm not going to ask you to talk about pets in the comments, but you can. If you've ever lost one, my sincere condolences. There's a bit of dark humor in my story because I went to the pet hospital as soon as I was discharged, and I strode into the place dripping medical paraphernalia. My catheter bag, wound drain, ileostomy bag, my arms patched up like badly done drywall, and loudly demanded my dog, and stroked her sleeping, twitching head, and said over and over, Wake up, sweetie. Mommy doesn't have cancer anymore. Wake up and we'll go home. Let's go home. And deep down, under all the layers of tears and fear, there was a dark little part of me thinking, well, this is a traumatizing story for that vet tech over there. <sighs> you know what? Screw it. We've all been through shit. And if I'm only allowed to talk about happy things, I will never feel genuine. I'd rather feel genuine. My favorite YouTubers aren't afraid to let their scars show, and I want to be like them. Yeah. It's hard, though. I feel pretty awkward and vulnerable right now. <laughs> Wish I had Titanium's imperviousness. Not to stop hurting, just to stop being embarrassed about hurting. You follow? I feel like in talking about my dog's death in an art video, I've made myself the bad kind of conspicuous. Uh, look, it's my badger mug. I like badgers. I wrote a story called The Solstice Badger. It's a beast fable about how the seasons came to be, and it's become kind of a sleeper hit. My book is available on Amazon, but I'm lucky enough to have a friend who is a professional storyteller, and he performs it, and it's so cool. I'll link it in the description. Not that it's solstice story season at the moment of this recording, but if you're watching this in November or December, go watch the performance. It's beautiful. And you can buy the book if you like as well. It's pretty. Badgers are impervious. European, American, or honey badgers, they are all badass. Snake bite? Take a snooze. Stung by wasp? No problem. Plague? Kill it with slumber. It seems like whatever they're going through, they can sleep it off. <laughs> There's a nap for that. Titanium is coming together nicely at this point. His scales were kind of flat, but it's amazing how shadows and highlights make it come alive. I'm still not certain that those scales on his feet are working for us, but that was one of those places where the humanness was darn difficult to achieve, so I'll call it good enough. I'm also not too enthralled with his immobility. I think a more dynamic pose would have been better. In fact, well, that's kind of a running theme for my elementals. A large chunk of them are just sort of standing there. Partly that was caused by the lack of background. Partly it was the fact that concepts like imperviousness don't really inspire an action-filled composition. 
and part of it is that at heart I'm the artist friend who draws conceptual art for my friend's RPG characters, and in those cases a standing pose is useful, and old habits are hard to shake. Oh, there's his golf club. There are titanium alloy golf clubs, and there are golf clubs that say titanium and aren't. Let's assume this is one of the good ones. I get tired of myself when I draw the same pose over and over, but at least the characters themselves are distinctive. If you were to draw my calcium or neon or hydrogen herself doing something not pictured in this deck, I think it would still be recognizable. So I try not to give myself grief about it. This is the biggest thing I've ever tried to create. It's okay that it's not perfect. Leave a comment if you, too, are a recovering perfectionist. We are a many and varied people. The thing we all share is a burning desire to do things right, and we are constantly outmatched by the people who are simply willing to do things, full stop. I actually had an epiphany a while ago. Most YouTubers start out clunky, if not downright bad, and I thought, well, I can do bad videos. And I did. <laughs> Hopefully getting better, though. A little improvement every week. I was determined to have a flight recorder somewhere on the sky. It's the black box. It's one of Titanium's most well-known uses. Imagine my surprise when I googled it and discovered that it is neither black nor a box. It looks, frankly, like a fire extinguisher. Nonetheless, I dutifully hung one on his belt, and now we've all learned a thing, unless you already knew it. Leave a comment if you knew about the black box being a red cylinder. Maybe I'm the only one who didn't. But that's okay. It won't hurt me to be told. I'm impervious. Time for a couple of small changes. Hope you weren't attached to that belt color, because I didn't like it. Something darker for contrast with the light background and pale belly scales, that's better. This part's funny. I am signing it just off screen. My signature is a MacGuffin now. <laughs> also, the scales on his tail are too teensy. I was tired and sloppy with the first pass. These things happen. Please note that he has a nostril piercing, yet another common use for titanium, and on that note, we're done. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I'll try to bust out some happy stories next week to keep from getting monotonous. Like if you can, subscribe if you wish, hug your pets, embrace your weird, keep warm, and stay healthy. Now that I think about it, I kind of would like to do that keeper thing with like, with like a sleeve. Keeper thing? Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch keeper with you. Well, well, on keeper's birthday, the wolf, wolf get, gave keeper the sleeve of a shirt, just, just the sleeve, cause, cause Dave, destroyed the rest of it and Oops. only the sleeve was left so yeah and then Kibo will put put it on in one of her arms mm. I kind of want to do that just to save me the pain of having to draw everything well I guess thing is gonna have to do it's gonna have to be taught for that and apparently I can erase that and apparently I can erase that stuff like I erase a pencil. Not. You can't, you can't erase an actual pencil. Keep looking. Somebody can't figure out where her cheese fell. Oh, Sonia. Look. Look there. 
Look there. Look. Shum. Look. <laughs>